Welcome to State of the Franchise Gaming and today I'm going to help you guys out with your 40 man roster to get it right so you got the right guys on your team going into the regular season and coming out of the off season. Alright, first things first, we're going to start with the 40 man roster and how it works outside of franchise. Outside of franchise, it's pretty simple. Your roster needs to have 40 men on it before you even jump into an actual franchise file. Literally every team has to have their 40 man roster correct, make sure they have their 26 man roster correct, and their lineups and rotation all set, un -X'd, and everything. This D-Box roster has 40 people on it. Again, you jump into the mode, it automatically gives you 40 players. This team specifically, they have nine starting pitchers. In spring training, that is perfectly fine. You probably should try to kick the tires on some of these young guys that you think are close or that you think have a chance of making a major league roster within probably the next one to two years. So either that upcoming regular season or the season after. Um, if you plan to simulate, maybe you want to play things a little differently. Me personally, I tend to have at least nine starters, probably ten, uh, jumping into spring training because I don't always want guys like Zach Gallen to actually be um, out there pitching with the opportunity to get hurt. I play with injuries on. If you do not play with injuries on, that is perfectly fine. That is how you run your franchise. I do though. Um, gameplay injury slider at 10 and my sim slider I believe is anywhere between 6 and 7. This initial D-backs roster also has 12 relievers. So that's 22 men in total that are on the spring training roster. Now, some of these guys are injured, so you may have a decently or high rated player in at triple A or, you know, or even at double A for some reason. Again, usually that's because they may be in real life injured. And unfortunately, unlike some other games like Madden, you can jump into a franchise with real life rosters where guys will be injured, you know, pre-existing injuries. You can't do that in the show, unfortunately. You can injure them, but there's an issue which I will talk about in a future video. Closers, you're probably gonna have one. You might have two, depending on the strength of the rest of your relievers. You may have zero. You may not have anybody that you trust that you can put out there in the eighth inning, more likely the ninth inning, to finish a game off, and that's perfectly fine. Maybe you do a closer by committee. Maybe a guy might be better off facing, you know, mostly righty lineups at the clutch portion of the game. Maybe they're better against lefty lineups. Again, maybe you just want to split the two. And that's perfectly fine. Again, I usually have one. You can have two. You might have none. It all depends on how your roster is, depending on the year is that you keep going and playing it. Catcher, you need to. There's really no way around it. You need to. Guys get tired. Whether you're playing with injury zone or not, guys get tired. And you need a minimum of two. On the 40 men, I usually go three. Now again, this is the spring training roster. It's February 26th. And, you know, I'm not concerned about it. Maybe if I want to kick the tires on a guy like a Rene Martinez, Grayson Grenier, a Dominic Moroglio. You know, any of these guys, hell, even Adrian Del Castillo, who is very young and has high potential, maybe you want him up on the spring training roster to see how he plays. As you can see, he's a solid defender. Um, he's got he's got some decent vision. His contact and power are not there. He's really not that much worse than the guy that's already at the major level on this roster. So there's no real difference. Maybe you just want this 22-year-old to just get their lumps, get their swings, and get their plate appearances down at an easier level, and you can build, you know, hopefully they build up from there. First base, probably one of the premier power positions in all of in football, all of baseball. What the hell am I talking about? This team has one on the 40, one on the major league roster in general. I don't see them putting another one up, though knowing this roster, Seth Beer also is on this team. He also plays first. He is right here. He plays first as well. It's good to have, you know, some positional versatility. Cooper Hamel, he also plays first. He also plays catcher, which is pretty interesting. This D-backs roster has two players that can play catcher. The other one being Dalton Varsho. He plays all the outfield positions and catcher. So do you really need that second 
true catcher or can you get away with just letting two guys put hell platoon there spell Carson Kelly every once in a while the D-backs roster is pretty interesting at second base this team in particular has just one man on the 40-man roster that's Cattell Marte but if you know Cattell Marte you know he is very versatile he can play second he can play short he can play all the outfield positions now his fielding isn't that great and his speed is actually going down since last year but you're not going to steal about a lot of bases with him but he kills it against lefties and he's pretty good against righties he's probably going to be a primary second baseman so anybody else on the roster they're probably a shortstop third base hybrid which kind of helps if say Marte would have go down with an injury that guy on this roster is actually kind of a Cattell Marte light uh, Josh Rojas he also plays third, can play second, can play short, and can play both corner outfield. He fields better than Marte and actually hits for contact, I think, a little bit. Not as well. Just not as well as Marte, but that's fine. Again, if you need somebody to play for a couple weeks, maybe a month, Rojas is probably your guy. It's good to have him on the 40 minutes. Probably even better to have him at the major league roster, as you can see. He is this team. He's considered this team's starting third baseman. The other two options are Drew Ellis, who is kind of average across the board, and Yoni Hernandez. He can play second, third, and short, but he only plays one corner outfield. You stick him in right. I think there's a huge percentage uh, that they slash off of fielding which i've still yet to actually um, understand what that is hopefully it's the same as in dd i mean as in yes yeah, the same as in dd as it would be in franchise though maybe the, maybe the penalties are more severe if you put him in right field he also does not run he's an okay fielder and his arm is he can throw it across the diamond but he's never gonna gun someone down so he's probably not the ideal candidate to throw at maybe shortstop uh, as the cutoff man, you know, trying to throw a runner out at home. Maybe he gets somebody extremely slow with the 48 arm. This team's shortstop position is a split, a split platoon kind of situation. Uh, Sergio Alcantara hits righties a little bit better than Ahmed does, but Ahmed blows him out of the water in terms of fielding. In terms of fielding, his, you know, Alcantara's arm is stronger. Maybe you want to throw him at third base here and there. Um, you know, he'd be an ideal guy to throw, you know, at third because he can be the cutoff man for the left fielder. He only really hits righties. Nick Ahmed really, he hits lefties and against righty, he's okay. But you really have a met out there for his defense. The third guy is Geraldo Perdomo, a very young player who happens to be on this team's 40-man roster, which if you watch the Desert Venom series that I had on my channel in MLB The Show 21, you saw that I lost him because... Well, I'm going to talk about that in a future video when I talk about, you know, arbitration and how to handle it. The outfield. This team has eight guys in the outfield. That won't fly in the regular season. You need guys who can play other positions because energy seems to matter. I would personally have David Peralta because he's probably your best option hitting-wise, though Beer hits a little bit better for power. You know, Peralta is your steady defensive guy. Again, he's not going to throw anybody out like crazy. He's got a very average arm other two candidates and the other two candidates are Stuart Fairchild who's got some speed and Cooper Hermel who is more than likely a double-a player at least for me and Dalton Varsho again as I mentioned earlier he's got special versatility he plays the outfield and catcher you're not gonna find a lot of guys who can do that he also is probably the fastest catcher um, at a 74 speed so you can probably snag a couple bases with him uh, he's got his splits are pretty pretty average across the board. He's got some discipline, very nice discipline at that. His durability is pretty good. Um, he might not throw out a ton of runners uh, with a 59 arm strength. Actually, he's really not going to throw anybody out in any position if his arm is a 59. He's accurate, though. If you can get that potential up to at least a C, maybe a B, you might have yourself a superstar player. In right field, you've got Paven Smith. And Jordan Luplo. Luplo is a platoon left lefty hitter as a righty batter. He also can play third, which he's pretty decent at. And he's got a little bit of speed. Patton Smith is probably going to be the guy more likely facing righties. So, you know, you also have to take that into account. I will show you guys after this how I would put this team's 40-man roster together. 
just on a whim, these are the five guys I'd probably go with. Again, Umberto Castellanos, he's got a, a high hit per nine for a guy so young. Hopefully, you know, him not allowing hits will allow him to, you know, build up in his other per nine, his K per nine, his walk per nine, his home run per nine. Sean Poppin is 28 years old. I don't really pay a ton of attention overall, but the lower in potential you are, the less likely you are to ever become even decent. Keone Keller, I believe in real life, is injured. So what I'm going to do is, Poppin is on the 40-man roster. I don't expect anybody to pick him up, and if they do, so be it. I'm, I'm not going to get hurt over losing a guy that, yes, he's got high velocity in what might be his circle change because these these numbers are, have no correlation as to us. Sorry, they have no correlation as far as a pitcher's overall velocity. Velocity, the high number you see there has to do with which pitch is being thrown the hardest. So it might be his circle change can be thrown at a 94 velocity, not 94 miles an hour. And you know, the rest of his pitches just aren't as hard as they could be. That's why you need to press triangle, jump into the player card and see what they are, see who they are. As a matter of fact, maybe you wanna go one step further and jump right into attributes, which I have stated this before. Diamond Dynasty has the option to do this. I'll show you, hang on. This is, I believe, the pre-order legend, Randy Johnson. As you can see, you can see his pitch's individual velocity right below my, my hand right there. 99 mile an hour fastball, you know, 88 slider, 87 two seamer. He's got a slurve at 83 and an 88 changeup. Now that's just the miles per hour. Mind you, if I click R3, which I've been asking for since last year to come into franchise, click R3, you can see what the pitcher's individual controls are for each of the pitches. Why is this not in franchise? Like this would be great, especially for the draft. Click it one more time. Boom, you get their pitch break, which 99 break on a four seamer, I don't think think that I'm not sure that it really matters all that much the four seam is supposed to be a straight pitch for pretty much anything else a high break means that thing is gonna fall or it's gonna tail away like crazy or cut into you or whatever pitch you might be throwing a knuckleball might dance living la vida loca and whatnot I've been asking for this in 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 franchise for the longest period of time you know velocity is one thing I just want the ability to see everything a pitcher can do on a card. Back to the real life Diamondbacks. Sean Poppin is on the 40 man roster and Keone Kella, because I haven't injured him, which, oops, I think I lost him. Where is he? Where is he? Bingo, he's right here. I want him on this team's bullpen. I want them, I want him in there. But he's not on the 40 man. The 40 man, again, automatically comes up full. So I'm gonna take a guy like a Sean Poppin and I'm gonna remove him. It's probably best to remove him rather than designate him for a sign. Well, actually I can. Uh, he's already down in AAA, so he's not gonna be designated. I'm gonna remove him from the 40 man roster because I want Keone Keller at, you know, at the major league level. So he's gonna, it's gonna take him two days to pass the waivers. So this is the end of spring training. It'll probably be about April 2nd or 3rd before he either A, moves down to whatever level I want him to, but he's already in AAA. If I did designate him for assignment, if he ran out of options, if he were down, you know, he used three of the three options, which every player has, if you look on your, your contract screen, I've already sent him down. He's used the minor league option. You can send a guy up and down, up and down, up and down within a year, and it only use one option. Unlike in real life, the rule is completely different. But we don't worry about that because that should be an MLB Show 23. I remove him from there and I want Keon Keller on there. Add to the 40 man roster. And he'll be at the major league level. Actually, he'll be on the 40 man roster, but I have to move him to the major league level in order for that to be the case. Now, I'm going to put the guys that I want at the major league level and the guys that I want at AAA and AA and guys that I want to sit in single A and incubate for a bit. So, I'll be right back. On a rebuilding team like this, I'm gonna kick the tires on as many guys as possible. Now, I may not kick as many tires on this team as some other teams, but I'm gonna let Umberto Castellanos be a starting pitcher. Um, as you can see, I have waived the guy, hopefully to send him down to the minors. I know you see that there's a 27, 27th man in AAA. Uh, I'll 
I'll make that work as I feel. I know that there's a higher rated guy here, and I thought about wanting him to come up, but there's nothing wrong with letting him sit in AAA um, in case an injury persists. Uh, closing pitcher, got one. Only got one on the 40 and one on the Major League roster in general. Kenny Middleton can come in if, I guess, he gets hurt, or maybe some other guy gets hurt. Again, use your closers and your relievers almost interchangeably. Because remember, closer is a role, and it really isn't a position per se. Um, I've decided to go with one catcher and let Jose Herrera sit in the minor league system for a little bit, as Dalton Varsho can also play catcher. And maybe I can take advantage of that. Um, Christian Walker, just the only singular first baseman, though we do have other guys that can play first, like Seth Beer. Uh, Cartel Marte, self-explanatory, he's the best second baseman and best player on this team, so he's going to play that position. Shortstop, we went with two, Yoni Hernandez is pretty young, and yes, he's a decent fielder, but I can't figure out where to get him in, so he'll spend some time in the minors, you know, working on his game. Shortstop, these guys can pretty much platoon each other, though I'm pretty sure Nick Ahmed will get the overwhelming majority of the ABs uh, in left field. Peralta and Beer. Beer is pretty uh, average across the board, or solid across the board, I'll say. Dalton Varsho, again, is also the backup catcher. I'm more than likely to let Jake McCarthy be the starting uh, outfielder and center. Um, you know, so Varsho will sometimes play uh, catcher, and when he's not playing catcher, he'll sometimes play, you know, outfield, center field. Jordan Luplo and Pavin Smith, they can platoon each other. Uh, Luplo against lefties, and Pavin Smith against righties. Now, I'm going to jump to the offseason and show y'all how I, how I like to work the 40-man roster there. The offseason is upon us. This team didn't make the playoffs, and the Dodgers beat the Angels in the World Series. But that's not the point. The point is, is you need to handle your 40-man roster in the offseason. Now, this tells you that these are the players you're probably going to lose in the Rule 5 draft. You might be confused as to why there are 32 guys on the 40-man roster when I started this with 40 guys on the 40-man roster. A lot of that has to do with the fact we lost a couple guys in free agency. They moved off the 40-man roster. You know, guys who are injured, when they come back, they are not on the 40-man roster as well. Luke Weaver and Oliver Perez both were originally on. Now they are no longer on there. Actually, I take that back. Luke Weaver is still on the 40-man roster. Sometimes when a guy comes back off of the injured list, they come back and they're not on there. I think it kind of depends on contractually whether that's the case. Anywho, there are 32 guys on the 40-man roster. Now we have to decide who will be on the 40-man roster before a specific date. That date usually being sometime around the 20th of November. And it is at this point, I will tell you probably my biggest thing. Do not go into this next season with a 40-man roster. Going into year two. Maybe there are some free agents you want to sign. There's somebody you want to sign, which as you can see, there are a lot of guys here. Maybe somebody wants to come to Arizona. I doubt it, but you never know. Maybe I overpay for one of them and then we move into season two and show you that they're there. Anywho, again, you, a lot of these guys, you get a qualifying offer or they have a qualifying offer. They may have actually been offered something, which if you see a parentheses Q, and it looks like nobody got offered a qualifying offer. Holy smokes. All the way down to Corey Dickerson. Of course, there are also some guys who haven't immediately rejected their offers yet. So when they got it offered to them, they can reject it. I don't know what Aaron Judge's qualifying offer was. But we have to wait to see whether he actually resigns with the Yankees or he becomes an outright free agent. All right, we begin with this nugget right below me. If a guy is eligible for the Rule 5 draft, it means they aren't on your 40-man roster. You can either put them on your 40-man roster to protect them before the said date, which is usually, again, November 20th, or you know, for the best and hope nobody else picks them up in the Rule 5 draft. I usually tend to lean towards putting guys on the 40-man roster who I think can be contributors or are guys that I think the, the other teams might want. You're gonna lose some guys occasionally. Don't get 
don't get ticked off about it. Some guys, you know, they just, maybe those guys probably weren't going to be contributors for you, so there's no point in hoarding them. Once they're on the 40-man roster, they'll be on your major league roster at spring training. Say, this guy, he's a 74 overall and a 28-year-old lefty pitcher. Maybe your team wants a lefty and doesn't want to sign a free agent. So if I don't put him on the 40-man, he's more than one, he's gone. What I typically do is I will scroll through every pitcher, make sure that they aren't somebody I want to keep. And as you can see, Jackson Goddard is a Rule 5 eligible player. Do I want to put him on my 40-man roster? Probably not. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven. I would like three more. Caleb Barger, Barger, Barger. I don't know how to say this man's name. You know, maybe I see him, you know, with an opportunity to, you know, play some, play at some point at the major league level. Clayton Gonzalez is not eligible. I don't think I have too many. Um, Josh Green. I don't know how good he's going to be. There's no point in hoarding him. He's got a low hit in case for not. If a team wants him, that's, that's their choice. They have to keep him at the 26-man roster when they go into the regular season. Or he gets sent back to us, which I guess would be good. He'd be a, a, a depth arm, but again, he'd probably end up being in the minor leagues. Anyway, here's one. Stephon Crichton. He's not on the 40-man roster, but he can still be a contributor as a relief pitcher. I will put him on the 40-man roster. That way, he's protected. Now, after I do all of these, you know, 40-man roster choices and whatnot, I may not end up with 40, and that's perfectly fine. Maybe I don't like the reliever class. I, I figure, and eh, maybe there's someone in the Rule 5 draft that I can pick up. You know, they usually tend to be cheap players anyway, so it's not a bad way to go. You know, maybe there's a position that I want to fill, but I don't want to spend the money in free agency, so I decided to go through the Rule 5 draft. Bingo. Here's a clear example of a guy who's a pretty good to solid overall. He's pretty, he gets solid across the board. He can hit some, he can, he, he stays healthy, field, he's got a good enough arm, and he's got some speed. He's 24 years old. Teams will be salivating over him. He will probably be the first pick in the Rule 5 draft. So you want to protect him. Even if he may not come up immediately, he's knocking on the door. Another Rule 5 eligible player. And I don't know if he'll come up, but you could use him as a trade piece. So it doesn't hurt to call him up to the 40-man roster. All right, I think I have my 40-man set. Let's see Dominic Fletcher. And I'm not concerned. If he gets taken, he gets taken. I, I, I won't be. I won't cry over spilled milk. Again, we've got 36. Those four extra slots give me an opportunity to maybe sign somebody and then send someone down, uh, or cut them, waive them, whatever it may be. Um, I haven't signed anybody to salary arbitration or their tender contracts yet. Speaking of salary arbitration, if they are a player that you want to keep. You must offer them arbitration. Don't just offer them a regular contract. You need to offer them both because arbitration protects you from losing them in general. If I offered Zach Gallon five years, 53 million, and he doesn't want it, because he doesn't, for, I don't know. The game is pretty stupid about that kind of thing where you can offer somebody a contract and yet, you know, because you can offer them arbitration, they will leave. They will become a free agent at the end of the, the beginning of December and teams are free to sign them. You can sign them back, but why go through the hassle? Offer them arbitration too. 700,000, I wouldn't pay him 700,000, honestly. I know how good he can be. I, this is still cheap in my opinion, but that's got more to do with the, the contract system in this game more than anything. I would think he'd, be, oh, he'd want more, but a million dollars in arbitration, maybe he wants to wait till he's 30 to become a free agent, as you can see, he's got 20, 23, 24, and 25 to, you know, get his arbitration money. These final two players here, really more like three, eh, no, I'll offer him arbitration, it's not a lie, at least for that particular player, but these two guys, I don't see any use for them. They're not that good, though this guy's got a decent arm, and what is he going to do? Like, maybe if I'm playing with him in AA, I might be able to 
eke something out of him, but this is not happening. He's 31 years old. He's getting a little worse with time. Why not offer some young guy maybe you drafted or did you find a free agency, you know, the opportunity to actually get better as opposed to maybe a guy like him. Maybe he's got something in particular that works for him. Again, if you are playing with him, despite his low overall, like maybe his curveball just falls off the table. His changeup is devastating with 99 break. At AA, they might not see that. At the major leagues, you might, but he also might get tagged up and knocked around and get kicked, knocked out of the league, despite the fact he's got three years of experience, which I didn't even know he played for the Yankees, and I'm a Yankee fan. That shows, oh my goodness, oh, he only played 31 games. Yeah, he's very easy to do. My 40-man roster is set. We're going to jump into the Rule 5 draft and see how things play out. By free agency period two, most of the guys that had a qualifying offer would probably be gone. Now, there are some quality guys here. Um, let's see, Noah Syndergaard is a solid arm. He's getting offers that are kind of all over the place, ranging from about 50 million to about 70 million in total. Um, Joey Gallo, maybe you might, maybe I might be able to sign him. I don't actually think so. JD Martinez is a nice DH candidate. He's 35, but he might still be able to hold his own for a year or two. A team like D-backs, I would more be trying to get young guys, maybe get some, get young guys for the, the farm system and get veteran guys who can hold down the fort for a couple years. So you can sign a veteran guy. I mean, let's see, JD Martinez, he wants to play on a contender. Um, he's asking for 6.2 million, which actually I think that's a little low. Um, he'd probably take this contract. You know, let's see, let's bump the money up, get his interest all the way up. He may not sign this at all. Um, he put up 33 home runs and 82 R 86 RBIs with a 282 average. I'll option, because I don't want to, if he, if he happens to fall off a cliff next year, he probably won't be DH material. Again, a lot of these older guys are going to be looking for, you know, contenders, or they just don't state what they want. They're just like, they don't care about the team quality. They just want to play, which I think is still the morale system at hand. They need to just fully flesh it out. That's a whole nother story. I remember when I had the D-back series last year, I signed a Roldis Chapman for a two-year deal for the exact same money. Maybe he'll take it. Maybe you won't. I'm kind of just throwing money out there. This is not a uh, franchise I give a damn about. Oh, you also might want to really, really check all of the players in the free agency pool. There can be guys that, let me see if I run into them. Bam. Granted, his, his overall is not very good and his potential is even worse. He's 18 years old. Maybe you can build him up. Stamina? Maybe he's a long reliever, you know, eventually. You know, maybe that'll get his potential up. At 66 overall, I'll sign him, let's see, because I, there's a lot of guys I did not sign back. So, you know, I need to retool the farm system. A guy like Roger Starr, um, I guess the longer you sit in free agency, the more likely it is you just start to go down. There's a starter here, Bernardo Figueroa, 19, he's a lefty. Maybe I need a lefty. So, you know, every offseason, do look at the minor leaguers. You don't have to sign the guys that are already there back just because they're on a renewal deal. Oh, I meant throwing off. Bam. He'll, he might take it. He might not take it. I honestly have no idea. Tender contracts was what I was talking about last time. And, yeah, there are guys who do not have enough service time. Um, and, you know, you can still re-sign them for 80% of what they made last year. So if they made a million dollars this year, you can sign them for no less than 800000 Why you'd be a jerk and not pay them the same amount is beyond me. But, you know, if they allow it, go for it. Let's see. He only wants 70000 for a year. I would probably bump it up because there's a likelihood he'll probably play next year given injuries. So... It is up to your discretion what you want to pay somebody. Um, it's unfortunate that at this point in time, when you call a guy up to the major leagues, they don't make a prorated amount of the minor, the major league minimum, nor is there a separate 
I guess, salary level for guys that are on the 40 man but not on the major league roster. I, you know, that's a real life thing that I, maybe they don't want to throw it in because it's too confusing. Maybe they just have no idea it even exists. I learned that from Matt Antonelli as he played in the minors for a while, got called up, spent a little bit of time in the majors, back down. Um, in the minor league system, you know, on like the Orioles minor, the uh, 40-man roster, but, you know, he never continued on with his major league career past about a year or two. Um, but that's just a little, that maybe that's not a little thing. Actually, that would matter a lot. It would probably help with budgeting. Um, that way, when again, when a guy gets called up, now I know morale is not a thing, but in previous iterations of the show, if it were a thing and a guy got called up, they were immediately pissed off that they were not making enough. But the reason why they weren't making enough because there was no system in place to where when you got called up, you know, you got the prorated uh, major league minimum, which should be the case for players. You know, you should start making the major league minimum after you have already been on a roster. So from that point on, say Buddy Kennedy played in 2023, you know, he, or he was on the roster for like a day or two and then I got sent back down due to a day-to-day -day injury and I needed to fill a roster spot. If you called him, you were to re-sign him next year, he couldn't make less than the league minimum. But that's just me. I'm, I'm, I, I like the meticulousness of things like that. When a guy like this asks for a five-year deal for not a lot of money, you can, in theory, sign him. He does have some major league time. He played... 49 games for San Francisco over the span of two years and basically was in the AAA level for all of 2022. You can sign him that if you really feel like it. Me personally, I usually just give them a one-year deal. Ideal salary says 30000 but he really wants five ninety. dollars I'll get him something close. Maybe I'll pay him. Maybe I'll keep it in the green. I sometimes just put it in the in the yellow or just give them what they want 590 he's not he's probably not going to go anywhere he's probably not going to sign for less so he's more, you know just give them the offer you don't have to give these guys a five-year deal just because they asked for it they almost never are like hey the length of contract is too low i wish they would you know maybe a guy wants some security for a couple years if not five maybe three years you know let players be different let players be I'm going on a rant that I don't need to be talking about right now. This is supposed to be safe for a future video. Anyways, I'm going to re-sign these guys, or as many of them as I feel like it, and then the rest, we will go to the Rule 5 draft and see where we are. Rule 5 draft, I've left a couple of roster spots open so that maybe we might be able to find some talent here in the Rule 5 draft. When it comes to the Rule 5 draft, I don't really... I try not to use it to completely fill out a roster. If I need a spot or two or three, then I'll utilize the uh, 40 man roster if I don't like what the free agent pool is offering and you know again some of these teams have decided not to uh, protect players that they maybe they should have but you know it's their team and they do what they choose to um, Ronald Torres good contact hitter good fielder he's gonna go to the Pirates which actually is pretty funny because I've had a franchise where I've had Ronald Torres on my team um, Reyes Moronta a pretty solid reliever. I would have liked to have picked him. Um, he's in arbitration. He'll, he'll get whatever he's making. Let's see. So let's see who we'll pick. Um, when I last looked at the roster, which was like, I don't know, two minutes ago, I could use a starting pitcher. And uh, there's some decent guys here. You know, I don't always go for the young guys, which, you know, look, a guy like Chris Rodriguez, he's got some time. And damn, he's got a hell of a repertoire. A sinker, a curveball, a hard slider, changeup, four seam fastball. He's 24. Let's take a chance on him. He'll be our fifth starter. As you can see, some guys that, whose names you may actually recognize are on here. Um, I'm going to go to relief pitcher because we're kind of desperate on relief pitcher. We don't have that many. Um, we got Wendelkin. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we've got Wendelkin, No Ramirez, Luke Weaver. Well, I actually thought it was a starter, but that might have been last year and coming into this game. This is probably where he was last year to finish 2021. So it is what it is. You probably could move him to starter if I really wanted to. I'm not going to. Again, uh, this is not a franchise I'm running with for real. Uh, Stephon Crichton is on the 40 man. Yes, he's on the 40 man roster. Corbin Martin, uh, Taylor Widener. 
I guess. Some guys I can call up, but I always like to look through here to see if maybe there's a guy who might have some good potential, who might be pretty young, who might be a one-trick pony. Maybe they throw hard. Maybe they've got a hard-breaking pitch. Something, something. Like, I use the Rule 5 to really, you know, fill in holes, you know, with guys who maybe I don't need them for longer than a year. Here's a guy, Gerson Moreno. Gerson Moreno. Got two fastballs, a four-seamer and a two-seamer, and a slider. He's 27. He seems to be, you know, getting better by the year, not paying him much. I will have to keep him on my 26-man roster. It's a shame he won't get paid more than 70000 but that's more than I make in real life. So we'll draft him. We use another reliever. Um, none of these guys are bad. Wander Suero. Cutter change up. Cutter circle change curveball. Carl Edwards, who, if I'm playing with him, I definitely want him. If I'm simming with him, he can kind of be really hit or miss. Or at least he has been. Uh, Luke Jackson, pretty solid relief arm. He's under arbitration, so whatever he's supposed to make, or whatever he's been offered. No, actually, he hasn't been offered anything. That's why he's in the Rule 5 draft. Remember that. You might want to scroll down. You might find some guys who might be you know, decent potential, or even if you don't, sometimes, I don't even care about potential, because I know that I'm playing the games, so I'll go with a guy who's got a C potential, who's got a, a D potential, there's usually aren't too many F's out here, uh, Jarrell Cotton, who I think used to be a starter, he was, back in 2017, spent a decent amount of time, I believe, in the minors, or away from the game, either or, came back to Texas, was a reliever, he looks like a solid, you know, long relief arm, maybe I, I'll, sign, I'll draft him, whatever, I'm not too caught up in the names, the names don't mean much, um, I think, uh, you can press square, or I believe on Xbox, it's actually X, and they'll, they'll suggest a player, but it's, they don't seem to offer you any players, for positions you need. Yeah, I, I don't know what they go off and maybe they're just like, ooh, look at this high overall player. Kirby is just sitting there screaming, which I don't think he should be rule. I'm pretty sure he shouldn't be rule five eligible. This is stupid. I screw this pick up. <laughs> I've drafted four players. I don't think I'll pick up another. So we'll if I skip a selection, can't pick anymore. And that'll be the end of the rule five draft because nobody else bothered to draft anybody for a couple rounds. All right, immediately following this rule five draft, I like to look at the roster so that I get an idea of where I need to fill in at the lower levels. If I feel like my major league roster is fine, I usually just simulate on to arbitration. I've got five starters. Gallen, Bumgarner, Smith, Gilbert, and the rule five drafted Chris Rodriguez. On the reliever side, I've got Wendell King, No Ramirez, Jarrell Cotton, uh, Gerson Marino, Luke Weaver, and Stephon Crichton. There probably are some other guys. Nope, there's nobody else. And closers? I'll go into it with two. I've got 13 pitchers. You can't have more than 13, except in the case of Shohei Otani in real life. You can't. The, the two-way player thing does not work right. And I am absolutely appalled at the fact that MLB The Show claimed that they would get it right. It is not right. You cannot DH the pitcher. You can't DH the pitcher in the same game he's pitching. It's stupid. How hard is it to program? Is it because you didn't automatically put him in as a two-way player because he came in the live roster as such? You should have fixed that. You should have done everything in your power before you put this man on the cover. Now, we out here looking stupid with Shohei. I've got 25 men on the roster. Um, might need a backup catcher though. Varsho might be able to take care of that. Um, so I need another player at really any position I choose. Uh, ooh, let me see. Alcantara can play third. He's more of a ready consuming guy again. And Geraldo Perdermo. Eh, why not call him up? Screw it. He'll play. He'll play occasionally. An outfielder maybe? Maybe? Yeah. So because I didn't completely fill in my 40-man roster, I have four spots to play with. You got to remember when you sign a guy... Um, that has service time, they will automatically go on your 40 man roster. If you, they don't have options and you send them, if you don't have options, you send them down, they go to waivers. So it'll take two days before, you know, other teams can claim them. 
If they don't claim them, they get sent down. Again, I usually use the rest of the offseason to go in here, and I'm not always looking to sign guys like Tim Anderson or really any of these. I'm looking for young guys to fill in roster spots um, at the minor league levels. That includes A-ball, because you do want some players down in A-ball if you play with injuries on. You've got players down, or if guys get cold, you know, you want to have guys down there so you can just swap them out. If y'all got any more questions about the franchise of this game, leave a comment in the description, or leave a comment below, and I'll get back to y'all. Holla at y'all later. Peace.